All right, so I've got the welding table put together, and I recently picked up this Miller. This is a Max Star 150. It was a used welder. I needed a way to weld up my patch panel for the original Precision Matthews. And years ago, I picked up one of those 90 amp flux wire welders from Harbor Freight. Uh, you guys know the ones. Yeah, that's it. It was one of those $88 deals. Um, you know what? I've had this thing for about four years, maybe. I've never even taken it out of the box. Um, my father has a MIG welder at his shop. And when I did my enclosure, I just went over there and welded everything up. I never really needed it, but I figured, well, it was good to have one just in case I ever needed to weld something up. Well, now I am in the situation where I need to weld this patch panel. This, these, these are good, but they make a mess. So I was contemplating maybe just picking up some kind of cheap TIG welder setup. I was talking to a buddy of mine about this, Wyatt. And he does a good bit of welding. He's really good at welding. And I asked him about those cheap ones. And you know, Harbor Freight has TIG welders you can pick up for about 700 bucks. But then you got to buy the cables and all that. And then I looked at other brands, brands that you see people doing reviews on. Well, I didn't really want to invest a whole lot of money. I saw a real cheap welder for a couple hundred bucks. Somebody said it was a great little TIG welder. And I was kind of leaning towards that. But then my buddy, Wyatt, uh, said that he had one of these that he would sell me used. So, ended up picking this up, and it's a nice little setup. I didn't really know much about uh, these TIG welder setups. However, Wyatt never really used this that much. I think he said he got about four uses on this. Uh, it comes with everything. Now, this is an older model. Uh, currently, they sell a 161. This is a 150, but it's an STH. So it's a high frequency start and it has pulsing. Uh, you can weld 99% of everything I'm going to need to weld. I can weld with this, uh, except for aluminum mag and magnesium. So that might be something I want to add in the future is get a different welder so that I can weld that. But for what I'm going to be using this for, this should be just fine. And this should do a good job welding in that patch panel. But first, I'm going to have to teach myself how to TIG weld. So that's what I'm going to be doing today. Now, I'm not going to go into the whole TIG welding setup, all that. There's a lot of good videos, videos that I've watched. Uh, this old Tony has some good videos. Uh, Weld.com. Uh, there's several, several sites out there that have uh, uh, good videos on TIG welding. So... Uh, you don't want to learn that stuff from me, but just thought I'd do a little quick video what it's like well, TIG welding for the first time. So here we go. Alright, well I think I've got it set up. Got my foot pedal connected, got my helmet, got my gloves, got my protective sleeves. Actually it's an old fire retardant jacket that I got. Got my TIG torch. You can see why it really never used this that much this uh this torch is about brand new so i got my gas on i need to set the gas but apparently you can't set it um it's real high right now but once i start an arc i think it'll drop down and then i'll be able to look at the bottle and see what it's set on and kind of adjust it but i'm gonna have to purge it a little bit to get it going anyways uh, i have no idea how this first thing is going to work. So what I'm going to do first is just kind of, without the without the filler rod, I'm just going to try to get a puddle. See what happens. Okay, guys, first attempt here. I've been out here for oh 30 minutes or so piddling around, and first I was just trying to just get the torch just to kind of get a little line here. So I was pretty happy with that, but to me it looks like it's really hot, so that's not good. All right? And then, then I tried some fuse welding. Uh, yeah, that didn't, that doesn't look too good. Something's not right there, too hot. 
Um, kind of getting there. And then, not too bad there, I think. It's fused together nicely, but it's really hot. And, of course, I'm not very straight. And then it just kind of looks bad, right? Uh, good one. Bad. Bad. Good there again at the end. Um, anyways, I'm just going to keep messing around with this, and uh, we'll see how long it takes me to see if I can't get this right. I'm kind of easing into the pedal. And going about half power, I've got it set for about 90, but it's still too hot, so I guess I'm going, I don't know, I guess I'm going too slow or it's still too hot, who knows. Uh, but I'll play around with it and see what I come up with. Okay, well, that was embarrassing. But, what did I learn? I don't know how to TIG weld. That's what I learned. But I did get a little bit better as we went along. Uh, I had to quit. I'm about two hours in. And I had to stop because I have ruined all of my tungsten. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a little difficult trying to not dip it in the puddle and then you contaminate it. You can see some of these are... Well, this one was the original one. It's pretty, pretty ate up. But it was an experience. Um, started out pretty bad, and uh, you know some of them were okay. I'm not quite sure. Here's a piece I tried to use some filler rod. I think I've got too thick of filler rod for what I'm trying to do. I was using 3.30 seconds and I think I need probably 16th or something. Uh, but this I was just trying to join together just using with no filler rod. And let's see, where's the good ones? I'd like to show you at least some that I felt like I did pretty good on. Uh, you can see some of that looks pretty good. A little splotchy with the little holes there. Not good. And then the gap got too big, and so it's kind of hard to breach that gap. Or at least it was for me. Okay, here's a piece I did, you know, pretty good on. Again, I was getting a little splotchy there. Uh, these look pretty good. I'm not sure about the heat signature. To me, it seems like it's too hot, but maybe that's just a matter of experience and trying to, uh, you know, get the speed down right. Now, I thought this one was probably one of my best ones right there. Uh, looked pretty good. And then this side looks pretty good. So you can see that I got a little bit better as I went along, but I'm stacking up the coupons here, and uh, I've ran out of tungsten, so we'll call it a day for now. I'll resharpen all this tungsten, and I'll keep practicing. It's going to be uh, it's going to be a while before I get to. This right here, I just went crazy. The gap was way too big, and I was trying to use filler rod, and uh, yeah, looks like something crawled up there, and well, you know. Anyhow, I guess I'll uh, resharpen this tungsten. As for the welder, man, that thing works great. Um, I didn't have any kind of problems with that. It was pretty simple to set up. Uh, it is a high frequency start, so that was kind of nice. This Miller also has the lift start, but I'm using the high frequency start uh, with the foot pedal. And, and that's another thing that I've got to try to learn is to ease into it and uh, get the temperature just right. So we'll have to see. I can definitely tell that uh, on some of these I got too hot and then some of them doesn't look too bad. So uh, we'll just have to keep 
keep practicing. So I'm going to get this tungsten sharpened and uh, keep working at it. Hopefully in the next video I'll be good enough to where I can start welding up my patch panel for my enclosure. Well that wraps up my first time TIG welding uh, experience. It's not as easy as it looks in the videos. Guys, thanks for watching. If you have any suggestions, experience tube welding, and you can offer any advice, please feel free to comment. Thanks for watching, guys. If you haven't subscribed to the YouTube channel, please do. Uh, you'll get a notice if I post a video, and if it's something you're interested in, you can stop by and check that out. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, and most importantly, be safe.